it's part of the law that teaches us law, what is what sin is and uh, yeah. not observing the sabbath it's like um, not observing uh, any other uh, command of the law this is yeah, my I, opinion. I know the argument exodus 28 to 11 i understand but that shows you don't understand what the point is no one says we don't observe the sabbath i observe the sabbath you don't observe the true Sabbath. That's the debate. That's what oh, people don't understand. When I tell can, them... Can can we talk about this? Yeah, well, you have to talk about it because you want me to follow Israel's Sabbath. No, and no, I no. follow God's Sabbath, which Israel's Sabbath was modeled after. And Matthew 24, 20 doesn't help your case. That shows you don't read context. Yeah, you yes. Context, right? uh, can you li listen uh, a little... I you, don't know you, if I can listen. I want to see your evidence. I mean, I don't want you to preach. You're not here to okay, preach. Okay, no, here. no. In uh, Exodus 20. 28 to 11. I just told you. Exodus yes, 20. Yes, that you 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 told earlier that is the Jews Sabbath. But, yes, it is. But uh, there is not Jesus who gives this law. And in what this. With anything. The same Jesus also gave circumcision to Abraham, right? Yes. And so then Jesus came and said, "We Gentiles don't get circumcised." So you're not you're not making any sense. Uh, I, he di he didn't um, abolish circum circum. Yes, he did. Acts chapter fifteen. Yes, he did. But we need to cir cir circumcise our hearts. So think... you just made, you just proved my point. See, you don't know my point. Thank you for proving my point. You just proved physical circumcision is a shadow. Of the reality of spiritual circumcision. Yes. Thank you. You just proved my point, but you don't understand my point. That's exactly my argument. Your Sabbath is like physical circumcision. It's pointing to a greater reality. Physical circumcision points to spiritual circumcision. Yes. Your Sabbath points to God's Sabbath. What are you not getting? Uh, you just I, made my point. You know that, right? Uh, I know, but... Um... But before you move on, I'm not trying to cut you up. You understand you just proved my point, what my point was? Or no, you don't get it? I get it, that okay. you I, that you think that uh, also the Sabbath is gone in the spirit, in the spiritual uh, realm. No, I don't think Exodus 20 told you that. If you read Exodus 20, 8 to 11, God says you keep the Sabbath because God kept the Sabbath. I didn't say that. The Ten Commandments said it. Open up Exodus 20 and I'll read it for you. You want me to read it for you? Yes, I, I will. Read. This is why when people chime in on my comment section, they get me upset because they don't understand the point I'm making. They think they do and they think they're refuting. I'm not saying you. I'm talking them. Yeah, okay. No matter how many times I tell them, you don't get the point. You're going to embarrass yourself. They don't listen. But here, I'm going to show you. So, guys, you heard what he said. He, he made my point. I just want to repeat what he said. He said, didn't Jesus give the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath? Yeah, the same Jesus who gave to Abraham physical circumcision. He said, yeah, we still keep it. It's spiritual circumcision. Bingo! Physical circumcision pointed to a greater reality. Spiritual circumcision. Likewise, the Sabbath of Israel is a shadow of the true reality, the true Sabbath. God's Sabbath. And just like New Testament believers, they get spiritually circumcised. New Testament followers of Jesus were not Jews. Follow God's Sabbath. That's my point. But hold on, let me get the passage so we can talk about it. It's hard why people don't figure out what I'm trying to say, but it's okay. Here. I want you to see Israel's Sabbath is modeled after whose Sabbath? Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. This is the Ten Commandments. People quote yeah. like we don't follow them. Here you go. Exodus 20, 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahweh your God. In it you shall do no, you shall not do any work. You are your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave, or your cattle or your sojourner who's within your gates. For in six days, Yahweh, see, here's the point. The reason why you keep the Sabbath, because Yahweh works six days and keeps Sabbath. For in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So I just want to know from you, does God keep the Sabbath day of Israel so that they work six days, seventh day comes, ends, and they work six days and seventh day? Is that the Sabbath that God keeps? Uh, in, uh, in a way, yes. No. I know you, no. 
brother, no, because John 5, John 5, 17, 18, when the Jews told Jesus that he's violating the Sabbath, he goes, my father works even on this day. I too am working. So Jesus says, no, he doesn't keep the Sabbath of Israel because he and the father work on the Sabbath of Israel. John 5, read it, open up John 5, read 16 to 18. I'm going to put it on the screen. So no, in a way, no, that's wrong here. John 5, 16 to 18. No, he doesn't keep your Sabbath. John 5, 16, 18. I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see. Here you go. Uh huh. Here you go. John 5, 16 to 18. There you go. Jesus himself. The same Jesus you said who gave the Sabbath. Oh, it's this guy. Look at this dude. Hold on. They were angry that Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. And for this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But he answered them, my father is working until now, and I myself am working. No, he does not keep the Sabbath of Israel. He works on the Sabbath of Israel, as Jesus does. For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. So why would you tell me that God keeps Israel's Sabbath? Jesus said, no, we don't. And also, Jesus uh, accuses um, the Jews that they did they not keep Sabbath. Brother, you're, the, you're changing the subject. Don't no, go no. Off. I, I come back. I come back now. No, stay uh, here. Does the I Father work on the Sabbath? Uh, yes, the Father does his does he work. work on the Sabbath? Yes. Okay, so God does not keep your Sabbath. Uh, what Sabbath does he keep? It, keep? it keeps my Sabbath because the command is not against God's work. Okay. It's, uh, it's against my work. You understand? Okay, let's try this again. Jesus said, God does not keep your Sabbath, which is a Sabbath of Israel. That's what you're saying you keep. So what yes. Sabbath does God keep? The Sabbath of Israel. Because, because Abhi, just a moment, that, just Four a moment, please, Stop. please. No, no I'm going to ask you a moment. third time. No, I'm going to ask you a third time. Yes. I just quoted Jesus saying he doesn't keep the Sabbath of Israel. You want me to read it again? God yes. does not keep the Sabbath given to Israel. That's John 5, 16, 18. You want me to read it again? Okay. So what Sabbath does God keep? It was in Exodus 20, verse 11. But, but you're so stubborn, you don't want to admit it. No, that, sorry. Can we go back where you said that Jesus tells that um, he does not, not keep Sabbath in the John? Buddy, the Jews are saying Jesus is breaking the Sabbath because they think he's a Jew and just a man and he has to rest. His point yes. is, no, you Jews must keep the Sabbath, but God works on the Sabbath because there's not a day that God doesn't work to preserve creation. So God is not bound to keep the Sabbath of Israel. A Jew keeps it, but God is free from that Sabbath of Israel. And that's what Jesus is showing them. I am one with the Father, and being one with the Father, I am God, and God is free to work on the Sabbath, but not you if you're a Jew. So going back to the point, he does not keep the Sabbath given to Israel. What Sabbath does God keep? His Sabbath. Which one? His. And when did his Sabbath begin? Uh, in day seven. Day seven after he finished creation, right? Yeah. Did his Sabbath end? Uh, no. So is today God's Sabbath? God, God, is, God is in God's Sabbath. Sabbath. Yes. Is today his Sabbath? Yes. Is tomorrow God's Sabbath? Um, yes. Will the day after be God's Sabbath? Yes, from this point of view, yes. Until the end of the age, right? Yes. Exactly. And also after? No, because it's a new heaven, new earth. He's going to create uh, again. Isaiah 65, 17. Don't misquote to me Isaiah 66, please. No, 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 no. And Isaiah 65, 17, God's going to create again. He will create a new heaven, new earth. That means his Sabbath will end because he's now going to create again a new heaven, new earth. Isaiah 65, 17. Let me post it for you. 
no, I no, no, not not this text. I want. I want um, to post uh, another. Bro brother, one. be patient. Yes. God cannot create a new heaven, new earth, if he his Sabbath continues in the age to come, because Sabbath began because he stopped creating. But in Isaiah sixty five seventeen, he says, "Behold, I am creating a new heavens and earth." That means he has to end his Sabbath to create again. I understand, I, and I think Sabbath is going to end at the end of the age. I, I think I have a text that maybe contradicts your point. No, can you're you not you're contradicting, contradicting this passage. But go ahead. Let's see what that passage you're going to quote. Can, uh, can you read for me Colossians two, sixteen and seventeen? Big mistake, Big mistake to quote Colossians two sixteen to eighteen. You're making my point. Big mistake. You sure you want to quote that? You're making my point. Yes. Yes. Please quote. Okay. It's, it's, no, it's no problem. I'm open to change. It's no problem. It's now, no watch. Problem. I just proved my point. He's going to quote okay. Colossians 2, 16 to 18, especially Colossians 2, 16 to 17 here. Brother, you're, you're, I, I, was, I was thinking you're going to refute me, but you're helping me refute you here. Yeah, Colossians okay. 2, no problem. No, I mean, you're a good man. I want you to come fullness of truth. This is the one he quotes. Look at this, guys. Therefore, no one is to judge you in food and drink or in respect to a festival, new moon, or a Sabbath day. Why? Things which are only a shadow. Music to my ears of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. What are you not getting that this proved my point? That the Sabbath is not the reality, it's a shadow. Who's the who's the reality? You're telling me that God's Sabbath today it's a is it's a shadow of the read it. The verse said it. It's in front of you, man. Things which are only a shadow. That's talking about the Sabbath and the festivals of Israel. You just made my point, Avi. Yeah. That's exactly what I've been saying. The festivals of Israel, the holidays of Israel, the Sabbaths of Israel are a shadow. They're not the reality. The reality is Christ. Now the reality has come. We follow the reality. You want me to follow the shadow. Exactly. I understand your point. You read it right in front of you, right? Look. Did Paul say your Sabbath that you're keeping is just a shadow? Yes. So who's the reality? God. Who's the reality? Read it. Jesus. So why are you taking me back to the shadow? I now have the reality. I have Christ. You can stay in the shadow if you want. I'm going to go to the reality. So you can stay in the shadow. You can stay. I understand. Uh, but... Why do I, I still not understand? Maybe you explain me. Why do you think that um, to be in Jesus Christ implies not keeping Sabbath? No, 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 wrong. We keep God's Sabbath, not Israel's Sabbath. This is where you keep getting me confused. I am the true Sabbath keeper because the moment I trust in Christ, I have entered God's rest. That's Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 11. I don't enter Israel's rest. And when I believe in, that's, I'm not telling, that's Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 11. He says, by faith, you enter God's Sabbath. So when I trust in Christ, that's when I enter the real Sabbath. And now in that Sabbath, I rest in Christ. But to rest in Christ is to cling to Christ, to obey Christ. Because there is no peace disobeying Christ. So now I look at, what Jesus says about the days of worship. Now, as a Gentile, now that I've entered Sabbath, and my Sabbath I keep and maintain by being faithful to Christ, not like the Jews who, when they didn't believe, they were cut off from God's rest. If you want to remain in that rest of God, the Sabbath God, you need to be faithful to Christ. To be faithful to Christ is to obey Him. So now I look to the New Testament, and it tells me what I do, what I don't do. So the New Testament now tells me, you Gentile, you don't need to get physically circumcised. You Gentile, the only thing you don't eat is animal with blood in it and sacrificed idols. You want to bring me back to the shadow. I don't want the shadow. I want the reality. And uh, what is your opinion about uh, Paul? Um, uh, tell me how it's spelled correctly. Cycle, circumcision, yes. Timothy. What, well, well, what, do you, what do you want to tell me about Paul who said Titus did not get circumcised? Here, I know what you're talking about. Acts 16 yes. is one of three. 
I'll tell you why. I know the answer here. Let me show you. So now either Paul contradicts himself or you still do not understand my position, which is okay. I'm going to help you. Yes. Why did Paul have Timothy get circumcised? Because he was Jewish. His mother was Jewish. And the Jews, they would keep Sabbath and circumcision and kosher. But we're not talking about if you are physically Jewish. We're talking about Gentile. Titus, who was a Gentile, did not get circumcised. Why? I'm going to show it to you. But let's read what you're quoting to me. Acts 15, I mean, Acts 16, verses 1 to 3. Now, Paul also arrived at Derba, Acts 16, verses 1 to 3, and at Lystra. And behold, a disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer. But his father was a Greek, and he was well spoken of by the brothers who were in Lystra and Iconium. So his mother was what? Jewish, right? That's why he got circumcised, because he had Jewish blood. Paul wanted this man to go with him, but he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews. Or in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. But now watch Titus, Galatians 2, verses 1 to 3. Titus, who had no Jewish blood, his mother wasn't Jewish, his father wasn't Jewish, he refused to get circumcised. And Paul said, good for you. Here it is, Galatians 2, verses 1 to 3. Galatians 2, verses 1 to 3. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. And I went up because of a revelation, and I, allowed, I, I laid out to them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. See, those are not ethnically Jewish. But I did so in private to those who were of reputation, but somehow I might be running or had run in vain. But not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So how come Titus didn't get circumcised, Avi? Here it is, verse 3. Yeah, because, because he was a Gentile, yes. That's my point. I am not ethnically Jewish. I'm a Gentile. Stop telling me to follow the Sabbath of the ethnic Jews. My circumcision is spiritual. My Sabbath is spiritual. I keep spiritual circumcision, spiritual Sabbath, not physical circumcision, and not the Sabbath given to the physical Jews. That's not my covenant as a Gentile. But you want to make me a Jew? Mm. Oh. Now it comes in the in mind in my mind the problem with the tree and the branches that are, were uh, foreign branches that was yeah uh, but Israel is cut off right Rome's yes alive. but but it it will uh, be brought back no well brought back to be part of the church not as a nation that's the point of Romans eleven but that's another topic because the same Paul who told you Gentiles are engrafted in. He's the one who's saying Gentiles don't get circumcised. That's Paul. In fact, in Romans 2, he says the true circumcision is spiritual and a true Jew is inward, not outward. The same Paul here because you're quoting Romans 11. Here it is. Romans 2. So I can't quote Paul talking about, oh, Gentiles have been grafted in. And the same Paul says, you Gentiles, you are circumcised spiritually. You are Jews spiritually. You don't need to be physical Jews to get circumcised physically, or you don't need physical circumcision. Here, Romans 2, 28 to 29. Here, St. Paul. So I am a spiritual Jew, not a physical Jew. I'm a Gentile. I don't keep the Sabbath of Israel. I keep God's Sabbath when I trust in Christ and enter God's rest. And I keep spiritual circumcision. Not physical circumcision. This is where the Sabbatarians don't understand the Bible. Here, Romans 2, 28, 29. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly inside, and circumcision is that which is of the heart by the Spirit. End of story. So you want me to be a physical Jew? Not by the letter, and his praise is not from men, but from God. And you want me to keep the shadow. You can be a physical Jew, and you can keep the shadow. I'm a spiritual Jew, and I keep the reality, not the shadow. And another question. Uh, what do you say about Jesus, uh, about um, uh, also uh, Luke? I think Luke. in oh, Acts, 4, 16 and 21? Jesus what? No, kept no, no. Okay. At, Please open Acts. Yeah, I know. Uh, Acts seven to yes. fifty to fifty three. Acts seven. 
Okay. Act seven, what you want me to read? I know what you're going, but good. What verses again? Uh, five, three. Five, three. 53, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They received the law as ordained by angels, yet did not observe observe it. Okay. What about it? Uh, you you keep telling me that the Sabbath is Jew. Yes. And the Jew kept it, but the Bible uh, accused them that they have not kept them. Yeah, because that's why God replaced them with the Gentiles. So you made my point again. Why do you think God rejected them? Because they couldn't keep the law. So then he brought a new law, the law of Christ. And he brought a new people, the church. That's the message. Okay. And can I show Who, you that from Jesus? Hold yes. On. You're, you're making my point. Israel, because they could not keep the law, God said, enough is enough. I'm done with you. So here's what Jesus says. What's going to happen? Matthew 21, 37 to 44. Here. So now there's a new Israel, the church. There's a new law, the law of Christ. There's a new circumcision that's spiritual. There's a new Sabbath, the Sabbath of God that we enter through faith in Christ. That's exactly the point of the New Testament here. Jesus, he gives a parable. The owner of the vineyard, he sends servants, the prophets, some they kill, some they reject. Now watch, Matthew 21, 37 to 39. Matthew 21, 37 to 39. But afterward, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. It's Matthew 21, 37, 39. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, Matthew 21, 37 to 44, what will he do to those vine growers? They said to him, he will bring these wretches to a wretched end. And will rent out the vineyard to others. He's going to take it away from him and give it to someone else. who will pay him the proceeds at the proper seasons. Now watch this. Who is these others? And who are they replacing? Here you go. Matthew 21, 37 and 44. And that's what Paul says in Romans 11. The Gentiles have been engrafted in. The Jews have been cut off. Here you go. Here it is. Matthew 21, 37 and 44. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? This became the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now watch. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. From who? From the Jews. So why do you want me to be a Jew and stay in the Old Testament? And given to a nation, producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. But whoever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. So Jesus just said, Old covenant is done. I'm not taking the kingdom away from you. I'm going to give it to another nation. Old covenant is done. It's now a new covenant of a new Israel, a new community who are spiritual Jews, spiritually circumcised, who keep the true Sabbath, not the shadow. That's the okay. message of the New Testament. You you just another two points, yeah. and, and then I, I leave you, okay? Okay, okay. You, good you just Thank you, brother. Uh, uh, ja uh, it will take one, I think, more ten minutes. I want you to explain to me. Okay. Okay, good. I'll try. Uh, you spoke uh, in your word, uh, old covenant, which means the law on the Sinai. No. The what? The the Sinai, the covenant. Yes. The, it's the old covenant. Yes. It's made on Sinai. Yes. 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 And the new covenant refers. We first uh, learn about new covenant in uh, Isaiah, then in Ezekiel 36. It's prophet is like, no, it's prophets like. Be careful. Isaiah okay. 66. Are you referring to Isaiah 66? Yes. Yes. You please, sure you please. want to use that? Yes. Yeah, no. I, I, I want to learn. I'll, I'll okay. teach you. Okay. If you read Isaiah 6, I know what you're referring to. Isaiah 66, 17 and 24. Right? You can put it. Yeah, I'll put it. But you're reading Isaiah 66, 17 to 24, right? Yes. I just that it talks about keeping the Sabbath and whoever eats rats and swine, they'll be unclean, right? I'll put it there, but that's one to look at. Isaiah 66, 17 to 24. I know what you're referring to because look what you just did. You just destroyed the New Testament. No. I want to show you. 
I don't want to do that. No, I know you don't. That's why I'm helping you not to do that. But in Isaiah 66, 17 to 24, this is what you're referring to where it says, they'll keep it from east to west Sabbath. They'll be keeping Sabbath. And anyone who eats a rat or a pig, they'll be unclean and they'll be defiled. Right? No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, just uh, let me open my... Is that uh, what you're referring to about the covenant, Isaiah 66? No, no, no. Which one? Ezekiel, Ezekiel... 36, 30, I know, 24, 30, 28, but you said Isaiah. Uh, it's it's related. Uh, to Isaiah because, what? Uh, just me. Yeah, I, give me the Isaiah one, because Ezekiel okay. 36 doesn't say it's the Mosaic law. Give me the one in Isaiah, because I thought you were... Just, to just open, open, open my, my, my Bible. Yes. If it's Isaiah 66, 17 and 24, maybe that's the one. Let me know. No, he's not Jewish, guys. He's not. He's not ethnically Jewish. He got caught into the Sabbath teaching. He's not Jewish. I know. This guy reached out to me. He was sincere. That's why I told him, come next time. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Isaiah 44. Okay. Well, okay. What about Isaiah 44? Have you read Isaiah 42, 4? Uh, for Isaiah 44. I think this is where the new covenant is prophesied. No? no, actually, I'll tell you where the new covenant is prophesied. Isaiah 42, verse 6, and Isaiah 49, verse 8. 42, verse 6. And Isaiah 49, verse 8. That's where the covenant is prophesied. Yes. Okay, you see yes. verse 6, what does it say? Yes, I see. I will put you, I will, I come, I call you to give uh, a covenant salvation. to the people. Yes, a covenant. Why didn't you read verse 4? Because it says you're going to trust in his Torah. The word law means Torah. Not Moses' Torah, but his Torah, the servant's Torah. How come you didn't read that? Read verse 4. Here, I'm going to put it on yes. the screen. Yes. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, and whom my soul is well pleased. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. A crushed reed he will not break. And a faintly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will bring forth justice in truth. Now watch here. He will not be faint or crushed until he established justice in the earth. And the coastlands will expectantly wait for his Torah, his law. The word is Torah. Whose Torah are you going to follow? Jesus. But you want me to follow the Torah of Moses? The, uh, it, this is not going into my head why you tell is the torah of moses not the torah of jesus because the sinai the old testament says this is the law of moses yes we know jesus gave it but it was the law given by moses but then jesus came to earth to give us his law meaning the law given to jesus when he came to earth to establish a new covenant because here it says whose law you're going to follow the law of the servant Isaiah 42, who's the servant? Matthew 12 tells you that's Jesus. It's right there, verse 4. They will wait for his law. The word law is Torah. Who? My servant, meaning Jesus. And Matthew 12 says this is Jesus. Yes. So when yes. Jesus came to earth, he came to give you his law, not the law that he gave through Moses. Why do you think Paul says, I'm under the law of Christ? Here, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, 21 here. What law does Paul follow here? 1 Corinthians 9, 21. Here you go. Right here in front of us. 1 Corinthians 9, 21. To those who are without law, I acted as if I didn't have law. Though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ. That's Isaiah 42, 1 of 4. The servant came, Jesus, and he gave us his law. So I, Paul, follow the law that Christ came to give when he became flesh on earth. Okay. Now let me give you another one, that you're under the law of Christ. Galatians 6, verse 2. Galatians 6, verse 2. There you go. Galatians 6, verse 2. Here you go. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of who? Of Christ. Why do you want me to take me back to Sinai? Did you know what Paul said about Sinai? 
You want me to show you? You want me to shock you what Paul said about the Sinai? Yes. You know what he said about it? He goes, that's Hagar and Ishmael. He said, the law on Arabia, that's Hagar and Ishmael, children of slavery. So you want to make me a slave, not a son. Here, let me show it to you. Galatians 4, 21 to 26. And we're going to read all the way to 31. Galatians 4, 21 to 26. But we're going to read all the way to 31. You ready? Yeah. Remember you said the law at Sinai, right? Yeah. And Paul says that law is Hagar. Yeah. So you want to be a son of Hagar or a son of Sarah? Uh, just a question. They they are slaves. Uh, but he's saying yeah. if you follow the law of Moses, you are a slave, a son of Hagar. You're not a son of Abraham. So here, not me here, read it. Galatians 4, 21 and 31. Here you go. Tell me, you who want to be under the law. See, that's what you're telling me. I need to be under the law, the Sabbath. Do you not listen to the law? For it's written that Abraham had two sons. That's in Genesis. That's part of the law. One by the servant woman and one by the free woman. But the son by the servant woman had been born according to flesh, meaning it wasn't God's will. It was Sarah who got desperate. So they did something in the flesh, right? Yeah. Isaac was God's will. But while the son by the free woman through the prophets. Now watch. This is spoken with allegory. He's saying Hagar and Sarah, they are an allegory, a picture of something greater. They're a picture of what? This is spoken with allegory. For these women are two covenants. Aha. Sarah is a covenant. Hagar is a covenant. Hagar is what covenant? One from Mount Sinai bearing children into slavery. She is Hagar. You are a son of Hagar. You're not a son of Sarah because you want to bind me to the law of Sinai. Why? Why are you doing that to me? I think uh, my understanding of this uh, is that they could they couldn't keep the law, which is the same law, because they didn't have uh, the spirit of God, the spirit of God, who um, fulfilled. Um, God's wish in Jesus because Jesus came to us to be like us, like man, and through help of um, the, the Holy Spirit, yeah, but the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit he, the he kept he kept the commandments because he he also also tells us that um, I came down not to abolish the law. Yeah. You're misquoting Matthew five, Ovi. I know what Matthew five says. That's not what he means, but. You're forgetting the concept of Galatians. See, this is why you need to be. He's not talking about time of Moses. He's talking to people at his time. There were Jews telling Gentiles, you need to keep the law of Moses circumcision. Paul says, if you do that, you become a son of Hagar. That's Galatians. You're ignoring the context. Let me explain the context, Galatians. Jesus has come. There are Jews who are like you who are saying, you Gentiles, you got to get circumcised and you got to keep the law of Moses. Paul says, no, you don't need to get circumcised. You don't need to keep the law of Moses. You keep the law of Christ. And that does not include circumcision. You remember when I read Galatians 2, where yes. it says Titus did not get circumcised? This is the same Titus, the but same Galatians. They, if I remember well, uh, they uh, decide to not get Gentile circumcised only because they don't want to put any more burden on them. Just like you're trying to put a burden on me. Thank you. Uh, exactly. I understand. I understand your okay, point. Now, Avi, he's now talking to these Gentiles. You're not Jewish. You're a Gentile, right? Yes, yes. Correct. But Paul said, why do you want to be a son of Hagar? He's talking to you. Galatians 4 is about yes. us Gentiles. He's saying, Avi... Why do you want to be a son of Hagar? Because when you tell me I got to follow the law of Moses, that law on Sinai, that's Hagar. I don't want to be a son of Hagar. I want to be a son of Sarah, like Isaac, born of the spirit. So stop trying to make me a son of Hagar. That's Paul saying it to you. I understand. Good. Last last one. and Okay, that's uh, a good one. Okay. And maybe we talk another time. Yes. Um, this is related with Sabbath is not it's about the Sunday what do you think about Sunday keeping then? oh very easy 
if we believe Christ is guarding the church, right? Yes. The Bible says that Christ has appointed bishops, and these bishops were appointed by the Spirit at the hands of the apostles, right? Yes. So you will find that the very disciples of the apostles being taught by the apostles, binding Christians to gather on Sunday. Why? To celebrate the fact that our freedom, our salvation was brought about by the resurrection of Christ. So they gathered on Sunday to honor that. Here, let me give you an article. I'm not making it up. Have you heard of Ignatius? Uh, That's why you need to know your church yes. history, brother. You, Ignatius is a disciple of the apostles. Peter, Paul, John, he met them and he mentions them. He was the bishop of Antioch, Syria. In Antioch, Syria, he was the bishop appointed by the apostles. He wrote seven letters to churches, to the Ephesians, Philippians like Paul did, as he's being taken to Rome to be killed. And he being appointed by the apostles says that all the churches started by the apostles were taught to gather on Sunday to honor the Lord's resurrection. Here's the article, and I'm going to read from him. Here it is. I'm going to read from him. So in the private chat, there's the article for everyone. Let me show it to you, and I'm going to read what he says. So the very disciples of the apostles were Gentiles say, we follow worship on Sunday because our Lord conquered death and saved us by his resurrection. So that's why we got there on Sunday. Here, let me show it to you. So you don't think I'm making it up. So now either you're going to tell me the disciples of the apostles who knew the apostles, who were trained by them, got it wrong, or you're wrong, my brother. Here it is. Let me show you the article. I gave you the link, and I'm going to put the quote. You guys see it? Okay, there's the link. Now let me quote Ignatius. Look what he says. Okay, Ignatius. And there's others. Here it is. Watch what he says. Epistle to the Magnesians. And he's one of many. I give you many others. But here, that's why we do Sunday. Because the church of the apostles, the bishops appointed by the apostles, the ones that Paul said <clears throat> were made bishops by the Holy Spirit to guard the church, said the practice of the churches is to gather on Sunday to honor the Lord who conquered death for us. Here it is, chapter 9. Let us live with Christ if, therefore, those who are brought up in the ancient order of things have come to the possession of a new hope. No longer observing the Sabbath. Wait, Ignatius, you're a bishop of Antioch, where they were first called Christians in Acts 11. You're an eyewitness to the apostles. You were trained by Peter, Paul, and John. You're telling me that you were taught to teach the churches. You don't observe the Sabbath of Israel, but living in the observance of the Lord's Day. That's why Sunday was called the Lord's Day. On which also our life has sprung up because that's the day he rose from the dead, guaranteeing our salvation by him and by his death, whom some deny by which mystery we have obtained faith and therefore endure that we may be found disciples of Jesus Christ, our only master. How shall we be able to live apart from him whose disciples, the prophets themselves in the spirit did wait for him as their teacher? Even the Old Testament prophets were his disciples. They're waiting for him. And therefore, whom they rightly waited for, having come, raised them from the dead. A peace epistle to Magnesians. I understand. Uh, can you open um, the, I have here, the Catechism of Catholic. Sure, go ahead. What, what do you want to read from it? Uh, you, on the uh, Vatican, on the Vatican official sure, site. Okay. Yeah, fine. Go ahead. Cate yeah. Catechism. Uh, where it pokes uh, the third, the third uh, command. Because I didn't go to the cat. I went to Ignatius. I yes. went to the Bible. Uh, uh, I I want to read you two quotes from the two two quotes from the catechism, and yeah. then make one point, and that's all. Yeah. In, in the the catechism of Catholic uh, Church, where you find the Ten Commandments and command the Number three, uh, 2173 article says like this. The gospel reports many incidents when Jesus was accused of violating the Sabbath law. But Jesus never fails to respect the holiness of that, this day. Who, who denies that? 
I, you didn't understand my point. Uh, I, must, I, must, I must read it to you. Yeah, go ahead. Read it from here. Okay. And I, I make one point and you answer. Oh. And Okay. Yes, that's fine. So uh, he gives his law in its out. He gives this law its authentic and author authoritative interpretation. The Say it again. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. See, this is what you didn't understand. Yeah. He gave the law what? The authoritative. Authoritative. Inter in other words, he is explaining its true meaning. Yes, correct. Correct. The Sabbath was made for man, not yep. man for the Sabbath. Exactly. With compassion, Christ declares the Sabbath for doing good rather than harm. Amen. For saving life rather than killing. Hallelujah. The Sabbath is the day of the Lord of mercies and a day to honor God. To honor God, yes. But here uh, you agree with me that this um, uh, this part it's talking specifically about the sab the Sabbath day of which um, uh, Jesus is accused of not keeping. Is not the the um, Sabbath that came after the yeah uh, and. Uh, the catechism uh, um, tells us that Jesus kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And another, the next quote I want, uh, if you just put the next page, uh, we read from the, the last part of Article 2174, mm -hmm. when the church explain why the church keeps exactly. the day. Started, yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, we uh, a little bit higher, or an article I. Yeah, it's higher. okay. Yeah. What about that? Give me, I know what you're doing, but ask me your question so I can show you what they're trying to tell you. We all gather on the day of the sun, the day of the sun, for it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath, but mm -hmm. also the first day when God, this separating matter from darkness, may the world and on the same day jesus christ our savior rose from the dead mm -hmm. sunday is fulfillment of sabbath see and you it, just made my point yep yes 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 correct um in and in article 2175 yeah. sunday is expressly distinguished from the sabbath which yep. is followed chronologically every week for yep. the christian is ceremonial observance replaces the sabbath yep. is christ passover sunday fulfills the spiritual truth of the jewish sabbath and announces meant eternal rest in god like you said for worship um under the law prepared for the mystery mystery of christ that um what was done and perfect and yeah by the way rory uh walter veith is a joke if he convinced you, then that means you don't know church history or the Bible. His errors and lies are pitiful. He's a joke. Don't ever insult us to say he's compelling. He's a joke, but go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, the last part. Yeah. The celebration, 2176, the celebration of Sunday observe, observes the moral commandment is the moral commandment inscribed by nature in the human heart. This is speaking about Sunday. Yeah. To render, I what it says. I'm just waiting for your question. To render to God, just uh, to know others what we are speaking about. Uh, to render to God on outward, visi visible, public, and regular worship as a sign of His universe beneficent to all. Uh, my point is, reading yeah, two articles, think? is that Jesus kept the literal Sabbath. This is the church teaching in the catechism. And um, oh, yeah. uh, you read the rest and, of it, right? Yes. And, and so you forgot the rest of it where it says, though he observed the Sabbath to bring out a true meaning, it's now fulfilled in him. Where is Just that? Just like Passover is fulfilled in him. 
Where is that? 2.174 and 175, 176. If you yeah. read in context, they just told you, though Jesus observed the Sabbath to show its true meaning, it's now fulfilled in him. And because it's fulfilled in him, and it's fulfilled in him, and that he is our rest, who ushered in our rest by the resurrection on Sunday. So Sunday becomes our Sabbath. It says it right there, just like Passover. Did Jesus observe the Passover? Yes. So do you now observe the Passover like the Jews? No. But why? Jesus observed the Passover. I, I observed it in that day. The church do you observed observe it the way Jews do? With four cups and ma uh, afiko men and matzo? Uh, no, we, no, we don't sacrifice a lamb. Why not? Without... Jesus observed it. Because... The point is, the things he observed, then he fulfilled. And now that he fulfilled it, we follow his fulfillment of it, not the way they Jews did. Here, it even gave you that, and you missed it. Here, 2, 21, 75. Here, right here. It said it. Yes, Jesus kept Passover. He got circumcised. He kept Sabbath. But he did that until it was fulfilled in his death and resurrection. Now that he's fulfilled it, we follow his fulfillment of it, not the shadow. Here, Sunday is expressly yeah. distinguished from the Sabbath, which it follows chronologically every week. For Christians, it similarly observed, replaces that of the Sabbath. And Christ Passover, it, Sunday it, fulfills the spiritual truth of the Jewish Sabbath. Why didn't you understand what they were telling you? I, I, I understand what well, you are saying. And now announces man's eternal rest in God. For worship under the law prepared shadow. Remember I said shadow? For the mystery of Christ. And what was done there prefigured, meaning pointed to, some aspect of Christ. They told you. He now fulfilled it. Now we, fill, we follow the reality. That's Colossians 2, 16 to 17. So finish their point. Um, to me... What the church did with this. It's... What church? I gave you Ignatius. Yes, the, ch the early church. Okay, but Ignatius is a disciple of John, Peter, and Paul. Yes. So he was wrong? Uh, just just let me tell you to finish the point, and then you, I will tell you if I think he's wrong. If you have to finish a point when I tell you Ignatius was appointed by Peter, Paul, and John, and he met them. You have no point because you're saying that the church became corrupt and it failed. So where's the Holy Spirit to protect this church? Salatan ben Yah, shut your mouth, you filthy bastard, you son of the devil, you whore, son of a whore. Stop barking, you son of the devil. Come and do a better job because we've had a 200 conversation, but I'll bury you in your fake God, you scum, whore, son of the devil. Pit on you. Sorry, brother. This guy's a dog. No so did the Holy Spirit fail? And that when Paul says to the bishops in Acts 20, 25 to 32, the Holy Spirit made you bishops to protect the flock from wolves. Ignatius was one of those bishops appointed by the apostles. And he says, we observe Sunday and all the churches did. And they got this from the apostles. So you're saying Christ failed. I, so dangerous. No, no. I, I, I only want to suggest that the uh, Holy Spirit cannot teach against earlier another teaching that the early earlier teaching oh wow so when the holy spirit said gets circumcised physically then he tells the gentiles don't get circumcised physically so you just have the holy spirit contradicting himself god forbid listen to no. yourself no because uh, like you tell it's too it's another type of circumcision it changed so do you have to get circumcised physically no but i but i all and i be because I have to get circumcised it in my heart. That's not what he told Abraham. He said you got to get phys physically circumcised. Yes, but after after the the gospel after, was, after the gospel was Thank you. After was Jesus. After Jesus, they they do not want to put an a bur another extra burden. Just like you're putting an extra burden on me by making me a son of Hagar because you want me to follow the law given at Sinai. So now we're back to the first point. Uh, but no, you can be I, a son of Hagar, brother. Peace be with you. Be a son of Hagar. I will be a son okay. of Sarah. Uh, do uh, I want to ask you? 
Mera, you are a whore and son of a whore, you filthy bastard. You're not Ethiopian. Return to your vomit, you bastard. Sorry, brother. Go ahead. No, no problem. Uh, I want to just uh, ask you a question, maybe rhetorically. Well, you've uh, asked me for two hours, brother. So you, we're going to go in circles. The fact is, Galatians 4 says, you're a son of Hagar. Stay under the law at Sinai. I'll be a son of Sarah. Do what, what you want. Uh, don't you think the church, starting after the apostles, did exactly what the Jews no. did? No, no. Because Jesus accused them. No, I just said no. Do you want to hear my answer? Okay. Because Jesus said he'll be building his church and the spirit will guide the church so that the true believers will always be there to expose the false teachers. But the true believers were Ignatius and he's the one exposing false teachers. And he said, you're a false teacher because you want me to keep the Sabbath. Uh, okay. Go read that. Uh, I, but to keep the, sun, the, to keep the Sunday, none of the apostles teach. Not Jesus teach. Not suggested. Not yeah. Okay, now show me where Jesus said, keep the Sabbath, and the apostles said, keep the Sabbath, in those exact words. Show me where they said, in those exact words, you now who follow Jesus, keep the Sabbath. Don't argue from silence. Show me where they said to keep it. Well, from your expose, Jesus said at the Sinai and in the Old Testament, keep my Sabbath. All the, oh, all the time. The Sinai that Paul says means that you're a son of Hagar? Yes. Oh, wait, game over, buddy. You are a son of Hagar. You're an Ishmaelite. You're not a Christian. Game over, brother. Okay. Paul says you're a heretic. You're a son of Ishmael, son of Hagar. You're but, not a Christian. You're not a son of Paul, Sarah. So that's your problem. Go read Galatians okay. 4, 1, 31. We're done. But, Paul, okay, Paul. We're done. Brother, we're done. God bless okay. you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There you go. So he's a son of Hagar. He's a son of Ishmael. And you bastards, you guys who are barking, you are sons of spiritual whores. You are scum of the earth. I'll bear you, your false gods, and I will destroy you, you filthy scum of the earth. Don't act brave in the comments section, you filthy dogs. Anyway, so for the rest of you, I hope you learn. He's a son of Hagar. He's a son of Ishmael. He's not a son of Sarah. He's not a son of Abraham. I tried. He was torturing me because he keeps reading and I know the point. But I hope you, the rest of you, were, you benefited from this. I hope now you see Sabbatarians have no case. You understand? Sabbatarians have no case. They don't know the Bible. They can't defend their perversion. They cannot defend Sabbath observance. The New Testament is their enemy. It destroys their satanic doctrines, their false teaching. 